Okay, so this week... Hold on a second, I'm not ready yet. Fire, heat, spice. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. The spice. The spice. The spice. The spice. The spice. Okay, so this week we are finally discussing... Dune Part 2. The sequel to Denis Villeneuve. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Okay, so this week we are not doing an Oscar film. Although it might be, it might be, it probably will be. But our Oscar series is over. We are moving on to uh, one of the most anticipated films of 2024. Of course, I am talking about Dune Part 2. Um, the sequel to Dune. This is a film adapted from the novel, also called Dune. Um, it is very, very action packed and just filled with story. The set pieces are amazing. All the performances I thought were phenomenal. Um, We talk about uh, politics and religion and becoming some sort of God King figure and taking a lot of drugs. Uh, Spies. The spies. Spies. In this film. And I'm really excited to discuss it with you, Hunter Callahan. Yes. First of your name. Thank you, Zachariah Olson. Uh, first of your name. Um, yes, this is a highly anticipated film. Yes. We're a little late to the game, but for good reason. So we're very excited to finally um, dive into the sands of Arrakis once more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have one question to ask you. And that question is simply, but is Dune Part 2 good? We're going to figure the answer out to that we're going to find out the answer to that question tonight yes we are and you will be here with us as we find out the answer to the question what is dune part two good (laughs) that was the voice i was speaking to them with the voice oh okay i see what you're saying even though it's not portrayed that way in the books with the movie that was my interpretation i got you this is why they should get me on for dune messiah dune messiah Denis. Denis. <laughs> Denis, call him. We're, Give me we're a call, ready. baby. And send headshots. <sighs> okay, cool. But is it good podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Hey. What's up? Nothing much, how are you? You come here often? I can't air out my dirty laundry <laughs> on live air of a podcast. It's not live. Welcome to the podcast. The I am... Dang it. The butt is it. I am the butt is it? No, I was going to say something else. Let's start over. You said welcome. Okay. Okay. Cut. No, I'm going to leave it in. It's fine. Cut. You want me to give another? You can't even see yourself. What do you? What do you mean? I'm looking at the camera. I know, but you act like you're like checking your beard. No, I'm just. Oh, okay. Say. You say, know how you do this? Sometimes I do this. I don't just do that because it. I do because it's the most efficient way to fit to scratch your nose. Because your nose itches. Maybe Sometimes. my beard itches down uh, here. I guess I didn't consider that you might have a feeling about something. All right, I'm gonna walk us in. Cool. This is. My interpretation, uh, or my performance of uh, Heath Ledger's Joker walking into that meeting with the TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Ho, ho. He, he. Ha, ha. And I thought my jokes were bad. Yeah, you gotta get the tongue looking there. Give me one reason why I ha- shouldn't have my boy rip your head off. What is he How about a magic trick? trick? I make this make pencil. this pencil disappear. Give me your head. Okay, cool. <laughs> Imagine if I was just like wham, and then you were just passed out, and I recorded the rest of the episode. <laughs> Ta da! It's it's gone. That was good. I, I want to hear that proposition. Yes. 
You think points to him? Let's not blow <laughs> things out of proportion. It's simple. We kill the kill Batman. the Batman. If it's so simple, why haven't you done it? If you're good, good at something, something never you do it. For never free. do it for free. <laughs> this is the wrong movie. Love this movie. Top five movie. Wrong movie. Top ten movie. Top five movie. Top ten. <laughs> we can agree on top ten. That's true. Because That's how the, math works. Your top five is. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. Welcome. Uh, I am your host, Hunter Callahan. And I am your host, Zach Olson. And today, we see Gotham's true colors. Um, no, Arrakis. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the But Is It Good podcast. Um, where we talk about movies and we discuss whether they're good or not, uh, among other things. This week we're doing Dune Part Two. Yes. No, I just had an itch. No, I saw a bug. Oh. Dune Part Two. Let's do it. So, um, how's life? Are you good? That's great. Um, you saw this in IMAX. I did. Seventy millimeter. Yeah. IMAX Maybe. with the with the big boy speakers. Was it at like eleven fifty p.m. again? Mm-mm, it was at eleven a.m. Oh, nice! This time, nice it was change of pace. Packed out. It was awesome. It was very loud, very very loud, very bright. <laughs> you know, I was gonna say something, but I figure I could save it until yeah, our first true, impression that's true, part. That's true. Uh, we can just go ahead and jump in if you would prefer. How was your life? Where did you see How this? How was you my this? life? You s- <laughs> Did you say was or is? Is. Oh, it's good. I'm experimenting with new hand things uh, <laughs> since we're using video format. I like it. I this, like it. This year. Um, it was uh, it's good. Oh, I just got back from Birmingham, Alabama. Wonderful had a, city. Had a good time. Um, had some great food, and I saw Dune 2. Part 2. I saw Dune Part 2, too. Oh, I see what you were trying Amazing. to do. Amazing. Um, Let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. Birmingham or Chicago? I mean, I'm going to probably vote Chicago. Houston or Birmingham? Birmingham. Really? I don't know. Birmingham has a bit more character. Houston's than Houston? B- Houston's bigger and has more stuff. Have you been to Dallas for work? I haven't. I'm going in August. I could have said Dallas-Fort Worth, but I said Dallas for work. Yeah. You know what city in Texas I like the most, actually, is actually Austin. I love Austin. Austin's Do you? Austin's tight. Cool. Yeah. Birmingham is cool, though. New York or Birmingham? New York. L.A. or Birmingham? What part of L.A.? As a whole. So, like, you know, the good and, and the bad. This is a question. I thought they were all going to be not, not Birmingham. I thought they were all going to be the city that was not Birmingham. Well, L.A. doesn't... I don't love L.A. I like parts of L.A. San Fran or Birmingham? Oh, San Francisco. Okay. Denver? Denver. Or New York? New York. Well, thanks for joining us this <laughs> week. Um, um, yeah, it's good. I saw the movie in Birmingham with uh, my friend George. He hadn't even seen the first one, but he loved it as well. So He hadn't seen the first one? Was he very confused? No, I had to give him like a synopsis. And then he went and watched the first one afterwards. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. I'm excited to jump in, man. Me too. Uh, me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, <laughs> this is the part in the episode where I ask you to give me your first impressions of the film. So, are you reading off a script? <laughs> We've like a between two ferns energy today. <laughs> He keeps having to adjust his microphone because he keeps bumping it with his nose. (laughs) You're not wrong. You know what happens when a Callahan walks into a wall with a full erection? (laughs) His nose hits first. He breaks his nose. (laughs) Sorry, that was a a, a twist on a Paul Rudd joke. (laughs) We don't have to keep that in if you don't want to. <laughs> I don't care. That's funny. Oh, man. Um, nah, this movie floored me, man. It floored me. 
I uh, loved every second of it. It's funny. There's movies where like, um, movies that I can like really love and I'll still be kind of aware that I'm watching a movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's not even like a derogatory statement. Some films that like, I'm not even in it and that's not a good thing. Some movies I can be in it um, and still be kind of like aware, you know, and then some movies I like forget where I am. Okay. And this was one of those where I kept like, almost like I was coming to from like being unconscious. And, and you I, were having visions? And I was like, spies, it's a spice. It's a spice. But I would like realize, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm watching Dune. Um, just because it was so immersive. And, you know, I did yeah. see it I did see it in, in IMAX in Birmingham with the sound, everything, you know, the whole thing. I think. Also, it was IMAX. Could have been. But it was huge. Huge screen. It was the big ratio, too. So I yeah, think it yeah, was, yeah. Um, and, man, golly. I just don't even know how they did it. I don't even... I don't even... Well, they flew in a bunch of sand. I get. <laughs> what well, I'm, s- true. <laughs> I just mean it was like, I was so compelled, and it was such a beautiful film to watch, mm-hmm. but also complex, but not confusing, which I think is crucial because in this kind of lore, it can be like, what he's the what now the quiz act? What is it? He has a lot of different terminology. Was that Tatarak? No, I know that. I was Give the dog a bone. It's making a joke. This Atreides is all alone. What? I said Quizette's Hatterack, give a dog a bone. This Atreides is all alone. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so if I just start like randomly, like you're you're in the middle of like I'll do it. I'll just do it. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna wait until you're giving like perfect. a really like deep mm-hmm. like in depth analysis. I loved it. I thought the performances were amazing. <laughs> were amazing. Um, you know, it deviates some from the book, and I think it makes some really interesting choices. So you've read the book? No, but I know about it. Um, I okay. want to read. I, I, I want to read the book. I, I had the, I, I had the book. I should have just put it right here for it's some. It's dense. Life. Dense. So Trey gave it to me. Okay. And he was like, "If you want to be a reader, you got to read Dune." Yeah, and he yeah. was like, "It took me forever to finish this book." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Trey is a reader. <laughs> Feels like a, a textbook at times. Yeah, kind of like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, yes, very, very uh, astute observation. But I loved it. I thought it. I'm excited for the third. I I find it so fascinating and so exciting and refreshing that while this is an IP, right, and is you know it's been made before. There was a there was a like a like a limited series on TV, mm-hmm. and then the infamous eighty four Dune, which is amazing. If you we loved it, we loved love those kind of movies. It's a, it's a fever dream, but um, it's funny that Dune was like this cult uh, book. This you know it was it was big, but it was never Star Wars. It was not. I mean, maybe it was. I don't. I wasn't alive. It's been six years since it was written, but it predates all those things. And like inspired Star Wars, inspired a bunch of things. And growing up to me, I kind of had heard the name Doom, but didn't, it was never, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I didn't know who Paul Atreides was, right? Uh, and th- then it's made in 2021 with the, with the reboot. And then in this one, and it's massive and it's so revered. You know what I mean? It's, but it still feels so relevant. I thought that's just such a cool thing. Yeah. Um, I loved it. We got Christopher Walken back, man, like Florence Pugh, Austin Butler. I'm curious to see what you thought of him. Um, He's a good villain. Yeah, I loved it. I th- I thought it was phenomenal. I did. I did. I did. Well, I don't think that uh, uh, Dune had the um, wide acclaim as like... <laughs> It's not going to get me as as much as it's going to get you, um, as you know other IPs from the past, like leading up to these movies being made. Yeah, uh, it definitely had a cult following for a while. Yeah, yeah, so for like, sure. If you heard of the Tremors movies, or have you seen Tremors? That's like a spin off, like not a spin off, but like a like a, a satire of of Dune. Oh, or like Because Tremors is about like worms and yeah. sand and stuff, right? Um. And there was a uh, song by Fatboy Slim, 
weapons of choice. Have you heard this? And one of the lines in the song is, uh, if you walk without rhythm, you won't attract a worm. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and the music video has Christopher Walken, Walken doing the sand walk. When is when did this come out? A uh, long, long time ago. Let's That's see. crazy. Yeah, 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 I can't. You didn't know this? Weapons no. of choice. Song. Fat Boy Slim came out in April of 2001. And the music video had Christopher Walken. Uh, let me do Christopher That's Walken. fascinating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can look it up. I yeah, mean, we don't fun. have we don't have to watch it. Anyways, so it did. It has had a cult following, and it's renowned as one of the like best, one of the best, if not the best, like science fiction book series ever. Yeah, written, I mean, it, right? it like it like birthed the genre. Not literally, not literally. That's probably. Uh, but uh, if if we were a famous podcast, which we are, that would get taken out of context, and I'd probably get canceled. But it like redefined. The like space opera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why are you smirking? Sorry, I I'm getting ahead of myself. I was reading a bad review and it's really funny. Okay. <laughs> it's Austin Butler themed. <laughs> um I absolutely adored this from start to finish. I thought it was phenomenal. Ooh. It yeah. <laughs> well, it was, okay, it was kind of funny because you get that, which is like setting the stage. And then you get like the And then you get Warner Brothers. Yeah, I know. I thought that was interesting too. You know what I mean? Like it would have made more sense if it was I Warner Brothers remember. and then the... Uh, in the first one, does that happen too? Or is that after Warner Brothers? I think it's after Warner Brothers. in Because it didn't stick out to me in the first yeah. one. It stuck out to me in this one for sure. Anyways, um, it kept my attention. And it's not a short movie. No, it's like 245? Yeah, 245. It did not feel 245. Like it, well, it kind of did because it was a lot. Like it was really like. It's a lot to take in. Really densely packed, but I didn't look at my watch a single time. Um, in fact, at the end, I was like, are we going for it? Are we, <laughs> are we still going? Because there were a couple points where I felt like the movie could have ended. Mm-hmm. And, it, and then it, like we kept going. Yeah. You know what I mean? So anyways, uh, I thought all the performances were phenomenal. I'm going to say something, and this might be recency bias. We can revisit this later. But I think as far as books that have been adapted to films, this is like the closest anything to me, for me personally, has ever come to like Lord of the Rings quality. Wow, okay. And those are my favorite films, so that's like really high praise. Um, like this is just so well done. It's not 100% accurate to the book. He can't fit everything in. You have to make artistic choices to make it like palatable on screen, if you will. Yeah. But it's a really good story and the changes that were made, like I think makes sense and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right? Cause there's some things that we'll talk, cause there's some big things that changed. Yeah. Which, which, which we can talk about. Yeah. Some things that were in the, the, uh, what is it? 1986? Yeah. 84. 84. That one's like. At least I think attempted to be like a one to one. Yeah, it it tried for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's stuff that I want to talk about because there's theories that I've heard that are really interesting too about mm-hmm. this. So, anyways, lights out, knocked it out of the park, grand slam, Shohei Otani MVP film. What? What? You picked the Dodger. He's because Lord of the Rings is the MVP in our our division. Do you know he's in our division? Shit. He's not in our division. He's in our uh, uh, conference, right? Or our league. League. He's in our league. He's not in our division. They, you know ESPN just released the top 100 players in mm-hmm. MLB? Do you know who's number one? Ronald Acuna Jr. Ronald Acuna Jr. That's Lord of the Rings. Matt Olson is number 12. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like... Freddie's po- number, number five. Freddie is like... Um, Freddie's like that that comforting, like really good. He's like Forrest Gump or something. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Consistent. Consistent. Like Love him. Gotta love him. Gotta love him. You know. But he's getting kind of old. Getting kind of old. <laughs> Dated. But he, he's geeking. He, he, In he, some he, ways. We love you, Freddie. And then you've got like Mookie, who's like Venom. I think he's better than Venom. Okay. Okay, you're right, you're right. He's um, He also just got rebooted because now he's a second baseman. 
True, true. So what's been re- Spider Man? Spider Man. He's like a. So you were close. You were yeah. in the same family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And then we've got like, a, who's the worst player in the league? Who's like <laughs> comically bad? I don't know. Charlie Culberson is uh, Morbius. I, is he still pitching for us? Mm-hmm. I think he's still in camp. I don't think he's been sent down or anything. Oh Let me gosh. see. Well, hurry up because you have to do a movie in a minute. Okay. I'm just saying you saw him wearing. Let's see here. That's really stinky. You have to let me put that on the internet, please. They're gonna think it was You have to let me post that. <laughs> you have to. I didn't react at all, so sure. I hope They're gonna I, think it was you. I hope I can like crank I'm gonna go into logic and like crank the gain on that part. Put in like a heat Just map. So it's like just like edit in a heat map. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh, gosh. You have the skills to do that, right? Just make it look like a <laughs> sure heat vision. <sighs> I can't tell if you Charlie's have to do movie in a minute. We'll yeah, figure yeah, it out okay. later. <laughs> okay, okay. Movie in a minute. This is Dune Part do Two. Do you need a timer? Movie. It. Yeah. Heck. Movie. Poop, in yeah. a minute. Movie. Movie in a minute. I need a yeah. timer. We're going to have a movie in that a That needed to come out. Spice. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> the spice. The spice I've been having like you. cramps and stuff. Movie <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> you know how it was hot? <laughs> I just cooled down, you know? like You just had to fart. Temperature regulation, like a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I feel lighter. I need to calm down because if I was if I thought too hard, I'm going to fart. Fart. Let no, it out. I don't want to fart. I don't Why have not? to fart. Why <clears throat> not? Why don't you have to fart? So you just, it just happens when you laugh. It's like, you don't have to. It just like, your body's like, ooh, 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 ooh. let's, let's poot. Uh, okay, here we go. This is Dune. Actually, you, you do this part. I'll take the hot start. Okay. This is Dune part two. I'm going to have to fart again. <laughs> Please do it during this. It's like 45 seconds in. Okay. Dune part two. Movie in a minute. In three, two, one, go. We've got Princess Uberland, who's like doing note things in the background. We've got uh, Paul Atreides and Lady Jessica, uh, and they're in the desert doing stuff. They're learning the ways of the desert. She drinks the water of life and becomes the Reverend Mother. He rides a worm and like goes out in the desert, and his girlfriend like works with him and is like, this is how you sand walk and all this kind of stuff. He learns a bunch of stuff. Then he says, I can't go south because if I do, bad things are going to happen. And everyone's like, no, dude, go south. Come on. Come on, dude. Let's go south. So he's like, fine. And he goes south. And what happens? All the things that he thought was going to happen. Maybe not. We don't see it because it's probably going to be in Dune Messiah or whatever. Anyways, so he becomes uh, Lisan al Gabe, And everyone's like following him. They get nukes. They go fuck up the capital, <laughs> the Harkonnen place. The emperor's there. Uh, he fights Elvis, beats him, even though he gets stabbed. And Elvis is like, it means everything to us. And then he becomes the emperor and goes to war with the uh, other great houses. That's a minute. Amazing. Amazing. Come on, dude. Let's go south. Great job for not farting. I held it in. (laughs) Okay. Shall we? Yeah. Shall we? Yep. Shall we? Do you understand everything or do you have questions? I think. I think I understand everything. Okay. Like what? Well, I don't know. Because when we did the original Dune movie, you had a shit ton of questions. Remember? I assume you answered them, so I'm caught up. Okay. Okay. But I don't remember having questions. I think I'm good. I think I actually am good. Um, Let's start at the beginning. Yeah, I think I'm good. So we've got Irulan. Power over spice. It means power over all. Yeah. That's what the thing says. Right. right. Power over spice is power over all. We got Irland. She is a Florence Pugh. Yes, portrayed by Florence Pugh. <laughs> she is a Bene Gesserit, as you know. Yes. Do you know who the Bene Gesserit are? I do know who the Bene Gesserit are. Do you know what they do? What their power play is? Uh, they influence men, don't they? I mean, but they're trying to uh, converge bloodlines to create the Kwisatz Haderach. Yeah. How do you say that? Uh, yes, and the Reverend Mother is lady who has the thing on her face. But there's a bunch of reverend mothers. So and like she is the hold on, she is the sister 
of somebody, the Baron. They might be related. I think so. But they also, in the book, and I think it's talked about in the movie. It is talked about in the movie. They do it. I don't know if you know that she is the Reverend Mother is Lady Jessica's mom. Yes, I knew that, and that's why I thought. And well, yeah, because that's she's the daughter of the Baron too. So correct. There you go. So they had sex. That's, that's Paul's grandmother. Correct. Yes, I do know who they are. Yes, and then Leah Sadu. Uh, is the one who seduces Fade. She's mm-hmm. also a Ben and Jesuit. Lady Jessica is one, was one, now is the Reverend Mother of Arrakis and the Fremen. Yeah. Correct? Uh, yeah, and they essentially are the ones who like are kind of pulling the strings of everything, right? Right. So they don't just... She, she advised... Sorry. She advised... Uh, I don't actually know his name, but the Emperor... Um, the Reverend Mother, like the big, the big one, the big, the top Reverend Mother yeah, influenced yeah. the Emperor to put the Harkonnens in power mm-hmm. and wipe out the House of Atreides. Yeah, yes, because the House of Atreides relied too much on heart, and you can't govern yeah. with heart. They were they were too liked, mm-hmm. and too popular. Rest in peace, Oscar Isaac's character. I almost said Oscar Isaac, but he's alive and well. Uh, yes, yeah, so I know who they are. Yep. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. And the emperor. Uh, I love that he kept his cadence in this movie. He tried to hide it at some point. It wasn't quite as prominent, but I heard a little bit. Yeah, at the very beginning, it was... It was... uh, Daughter. This war. (laughs) Arrakis. What would you do in this case? Harkonnens. And the spies. The spies. (laughs) Um... for the record, I love I love that he's he's in this film. I love that he's back. He's an absolute Me too. legend. Me too. Just yeah, carry on. Sorry. Christopher Walken's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's great. Anyway, so we uh um, We're on Arrakis. Yeah. And the Fremen are attacked by or not attacked, but like the, the Harkonnens are like out on patrol. Mm-hmm. Like you see your name? <laughs> It's like the radio. I I got it. Did you like the? What did you think of the when they floated up? Like how, like that scene when they like floated up the mountain. I don't understand it, but it was cool, you know. I mean, yeah, it's just like technology. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> technology. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so we see them. They're hiding. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like this is like directly after. This is like right after. This is the first film ends. This one starts. Or has there been any sort of time passage? Let's talk about time passage because how much time does pass from the f- beginning of the first movie until the end of this movie it's it's like about a year maybe less than a year okay which is different than the book in which about 3 years pass so yes. he's like way down south on the other side of like the bad storms with the fremen for like years learning their ways before like the conflict happens. Yes. And that is also uh, an important distinction because in the book, Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I guess, jump to this immediately, but I guess we can, we can jump all over the place, but in the book, his sister is born. Right. 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 So old enough. This is how. Yeah. Yeah. Continue, please. Well, yeah, but like she, she's not like a baby. She's a toddler essentially. Remember in the 1984 iteration of the Dune movie, uh, we see like a toddler, uh, Aaliyah, I think her name is, mm-hmm. and she is like super knowledgeable, but it's really weird, right? So um, that's not the only weird aspect of the books that Denis has left out. There's also, we don't see any navigators. Do you remember who the navigators are? Oh, yeah. You remember the like tub of like tentacle yeah. things? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. And yeah, those yeah, are like yeah. beings that have like taken so much spice that they've like evolved beyond humanity kind of thing. Oh my gosh. Do you remember I totally the navigators? I forgot about the navigators. Yeah. They also cut out the the Mintats mm-hmm. in this one. Um which he actually made a comment because there's a guy I I I don't know his name. Um but he was he was in the first movie. He's the older guy, black guy, white. He has, you know, yeah, like yeah. he's a phenomenal actor. Right. And he said that like Cutting him from this movie was like extremely painful, um, but that's another aspect that's not in this film. Right, right, right. Uh, but oh yeah, dude, I totally forgot about the 
the navigators? That's so strange. Yeah. I wonder if we'll see any in Messiah. Well, so that's the question, right? <clears throat> and we're jumping like way ahead now. But the question that a lot of people have is, if he has left these the weirdest parts of the books out, how is he going to do Messiah? Because Messiah gets kind of weird too. Yeah, I've never read Messiah. Um, do me a favor and Google Leto Atreides the second. So like R- Roman numeral two and look at images. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if he's in Messiah. I haven't read Messiah, but uh, he definitely comes in the picture fairly, you know, not well, long after. Is, isn't is Leto... Oh my gosh, is that the dude? Is that the guy who played Ed? Yeah, it is. What? What's this guy's name? James McAvoy played him in the limited series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's a worm. Um, <laughs> yeah, is he the son of Paul? Yes, because in the book, his son Leto gets killed. Yeah, so he has a son named Leto with the second Johnny. who dies. Then he has a pair of twins, and he names one something, and he names the other one Leto the second again. So there's two kids named Leto the second. This is the 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 one that doesn't die as a child. And this is this has happens in Messiah. I don't know. I don't. I, I actually don't know. I have heard that. Um, I have heard that the books go just absolutely bonkers. Like after Messiah, they just this is like starting in Messiah. They go just completely nuts. What are you doing? So it's, um, I don't know how this works. I'm sure if we read the books, we would find out. But um, <clears throat> he doesn't become a worm until 3,500 years after uh, the events of Children of Dune. Excuse me? That's crazy. So So that's it. Let me ask you this. Were, were you prior to... Dune to 2021. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I was aware of all the weird shit. But, like, you're not, like, a Dune purist. Oh, no. Okay. Because I'm wondering if there's people who are, like, this is not really Dune. Maybe 4% of the population. Because if you look at, like, Letterboxd, it, 90%, 96% of people like it. Well, I guess it's know? just you have to realize, like, to your point... Um, that you said earlier, this, like, you have to kind of recognize what can and, like, cannot work <clears throat> on screen. Yeah. But at the same time, we have the Baron Harkonnen who is, like, floating with a ball that breathes for him or something. Yeah. You know? See, that's just weird enough and, like, grotesque enough to be like, what the hell? And he takes baths and, like, Motor Sludge. oil or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So, anyways. But anyway, yeah. So, there's some, some major changes from the book, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. which which we can, you know, we can kind of talk about later. But, um, yeah. So, we kind of see him navigating life with the Fremen and trying to uh, get into their good graces. And he really only has, like, one cheerleader at the beginning, and that's Stilgar. I think really shines in this movie. Stilgar, man, he was. Paul could have done he was anything. Committed. Paul he could was have committed. Paul could have like left the camp and like pooped in a hole, <laughs> even though you're supposed to poop in your suit so and that he it could recycle like, the water. He'd been like, and Lisa, he'd been like, he is. This is proof. Lisa <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's fascinating? This movie. So the to to me the big there's politics there's. Um colonialism there's okay even like capitalism all this kind of stuff but the biggest i guess most obvious theme of this is the the dangers and power and i'm not like invalidating it or anybody's beliefs or whatever but the the potential danger and power and influence 
of like a messianic figure. Sure. You know, to me at least it was, and it was the fabled, you know, Lisa Nagaib or the Kwisatz, Kwisatz Haderach, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the how that can be used to manipulate. And I think it's interesting because you have like all these different parties who are like, one is like, it's it's him. He's the prophecy come true. Yeah. You know, then there's some who are like, I don't believe in this at all. Right. And then there's some who are like, I don't really care, but we can use this yeah, to achieve our goals. And, and then that, there's even some, sorry, like Stilgar, in my opinion, who, who I do like, who are like, I'm going to make this true. Sure. And then you also have, remember back in the first movie, um, the Reverend Mother, when she puts his hand in the uh, box and the Gom Jabbar at Gom his neck. Jabbar, yeah. Um, at that point, she knew basically that he was... The, or he had the potential to be the Kwisatz Haderach, but it wasn't time yet, right? Like, it, it was supposed to happen, like, a generation in the future. So Lady Jessica, I don't know if you know this. Um, she broke the rule, right? Right, she wasn't supposed to, because they can, like, c- manipulate their bodies. Mm-hmm. And so she she could just, like, make a child a boy or a girl. Which is the same reason they can survive the water of life. And Correct. why, I didn't realize this, but when Paul gets dead at the end, yeah, it's a poison blade. Yeah. And the reason he, because he's been trained to. Right, yes, right. He's been trained to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but she was supposed to have a girl and she didn't. She had a boy. Mm-hmm. And so that might play into why they wanted to wipe out House Atreides like all at once. Because one, they didn't like him because they were too like lovey dovey. But mm-hmm. two, you know, Lady Jessica kind of like went against the the Reverend Mother. Yeah. And they can get back the, on track with Fade. But they, yeah, 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 exactly. So, anyways. But then again, Fade, yeah, Fade gives uh, Leah Sedu, which I can't remember that Bene Gesserit's name, yeah, so we're going to call her that. Leah, <laughs> or I am until you tell me what it is. Lady Margot Fenring. Okay, Lady Margot. Um, she's having a girl, because she says, like, a girl just like you requested or whatever in the yes. movie. Um, what were we talking about? What was that? How, was that? How did I get well, there? I was talking about um, the different views on the prophecy and the messianic figure and... Yeah, so, so yeah. there's also people that recognize him as potentially this messiah, but just, like, wanting to kill it. <laughs> just wanting to yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like a kill baby Hitler kind of situation, yeah. you know. Um, and then what's interesting to me is that I think Paul recognizes what's going on. I mean, he obviously recognizes what's going on, that, like, the reason that the people on Arrakis, the Fremen, see him as this figure is because the Bene Gesserit have been instilling these beliefs in that population for, like, generations, right? This yeah. is just, like, they built the religion. But when he... That's fascinating. Sorry, we'll come back to that. Yeah, we, we can come back to that. But at the same time, we can talk about it right now. At the same time, when he drinks the water of life, he starts having these visions, and, like, he kind of becomes the thing that they say he's going to be. So it's not just like a power play. It's yeah. like kind of real, right? Well, it's interesting because there's definitely, uh, you, you know, the effects of the water of life. You, you know, he, I think he, but I know Lady, Lady Jessica, they talk with Aaliyah, who's a fetus. You right. Know? And, like, and the only reason they're able to, well, I guess Lady Jessica communicate with her from the get-go. But the reason he's able to communicate with her is because she's also taken the water of life. Yes. So she's basically a she reverend like mother before birth. Yeah, prematurely like opens her eyes and stuff. And we get the surprise cameo from Anya Dana Joy as uh, older adult Leah on the like water filled Arrakis later. Yeah. Um, but no, I was saying that's so fascinating because just the concept of being like, you know, it's such a, a, a mind trip where. To be Paul, you know, like I was trying to explain this to George because he hadn't seen it. And I was like, I was like, there's this prophecy of he's going to be this chosen one and like this Messiah figure. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't really believe it or like want to play into it. And then things start happening. And then you kind of think maybe he believes it. And it's this question of is he leaning into it to achieve his goal and get revenge? Or is it like, hold on a second, maybe I actually am this or is it both you know well he definitely has the motivation at the beginning of this movie and in the book for a long time of i want to like he sincerely genuinely wants to free the fremen 
mm-hmm. and like bring them to salvation. Yeah. Right. But then uh, Gurney comes in the picture and he's like, no, man, use this for. Yeah. And and think about in the first movie, his his father is telling him like the th- the main thing that he teaches him before he dies is like, you know, this is ours. This planet is ours. But the only way we can keep it is by befriending them, you know, yeah. the Fremen. We need the Fremen on our side. Um, and so it's th- that interplay as well. And I think once he takes the water of life and sees all the different possibilities, he's, I mean, he's a Atreides again, right? He puts the ring on mm-hmm. at the end and like holds it up and says, I'm the emperor and all that kind of stuff. Sorry. I just jumped right to the fucking end. No, 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 it's fine. But I, you know, like this is, we're skipping a ton because we do, th- but this is all the story. Like I love seeing it. You know, he mm-hmm. joins the Fremen. I want to come back to his name that 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 he chooses and like the mystery and the mystery around it or whatever yeah. it is. Maudib. Um but we see him ride the worm and we see him uh you know he's like they're taking out spice harvesters and like mm-hmm. all these things that are happening and it things seems like it just just things just keep going well and well and well and well. Um but then there's little aspects that are kind of just being not forced because they happen but like knowingly put into play like Stilgar is like they say that the mother of Lisa Nagaig is Eve is going to be Reverend Mother so I want you to become a Reverend Mother yeah but for him he's like prophecy but it's like you you you, you did it you did it you know which I guess the question is like does that invalidate it well I think the question more so so like they were both given a test at the same time they come into the like underground place and they're like he can't stay let the desert decide his fate so remember they sent him out mm-hmm. He probably would have died if Johnny Johnny hadn't come Which out is to funny like, teach him the she ways. She doesn't see him as Lisa. Ga- well, but she wasn't. That wasn't her motivation. Her motivation was just no. I know he's a good warrior. It's just a, just a, just it's just kind of ironic to me. That, yeah, you know. But then Lady Jessica was given a test because if you're not capable of being the Reverend Mother, the it water of you. life would just kill you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So so, so, so I guess Stilgar maybe put that in motion, but he had no way of really knowing if like. She would survive it. Well, she would. She they. He, he told her, you know, if if you don't, if you're not our Reverend Mother, we have no reason to keep you. So we'll just return your water to the. So they were just going to kill her anyways. So it's yeah, li- yeah, that's literally true. either take this. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Because they brought him back, and everyone's like, "You're a douche. You killed Jamis. We don't yeah. want you here." Right. Um. That's why I didn't realize that there's a whole subplot in the book. I guess where like it's. He has to take care of Jamis's family. Is that actually in the book? He like marries. Yeah, it's his, like he his, like his, assumes his place. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Probably best if that wasn't in there because that's kind of weird. But but, but he it's does he does like call on the spirit of Jonas to he like does, yeah lead him and he says and like, he says go to, south you have to see or whatever you yeah have to go see um and I was trying to explain to George I was like it wasn't like he was like oh you're some horrible guy I'm gonna kill you it's like it was like a it was like a ritual it was like a tradition it was like right. You just know. like the not just like, but similar to when he's at the like circle. I can't remember what the like meeting is called, but that like huge circle yeah, underground. Yeah, yeah. And um Stilgar is like, You have to kill me and take yeah. my place. And he's like he's very willing. bitch, I'm in charge, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, he's willing. He's like, Now's the time, I'm weak, I'm hurt, yeah, mm-hmm. this is your chance. Um, it's interesting, but what I want to circle back to is this fascinating idea of like you know, to be in Paul's shoes and to like know, okay, these people are expecting this Messiah because they've been told for so long that he's coming. Yeah. It's it's a wild concept to me to be able to be like, I can trace back to the beginning of this religion in like my lifetime or like my family's lifetime or whatever. And it's just a weird, it's like, and I promise I'm not trying to invalidate anybody's beliefs, but like I think of like Scientology or whatever, where that's like, or there's certain books like the, like I think it's like the Book of Mormon, something like that, where it's like the 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 sacred texts are like a hundred years old or less. Okay, you know what I mean? And it's like you can change back to like one person. Yeah, and it's grown. It's just an interesting concept. But these I'm, are I'm not saying that they're these are good, way bad, or wrong, whatever, but way older. So this is like thousands of years, probably. I would think, but keep in mind that this is what year ten thousand something. Yeah, keep in more. mind that the, um, the Reverend Mother, when she takes the water of life and survives, 
gets all the memories of all the Reverend Mothers before. So they're probably connected to the B'nai Gesserit who instilled the religion there. Yeah. But yeah. they also see, like, the plan at that point. You What's what I'm funny saying? is that, that's interesting, is that there's enough, like, mysticism, mystical stuff that happens that it's like, well, this is crazy, this is legit, you know? Like, it'd be wild to be in Paul's shoes and be like, this is all, this is all bullshit, but then be having visions. That's what I was saying. And then be like, right, exactly. you are so-and-so and so-and-so. And so so on the one hand, he recognizes that this is all, like, you know, subtle manipulation, political manipulation yeah. on the part of this like organization of uh, like shadow government women who can control their bodies. (laughs) I don't, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And on the other hand, he's like having these visions and he's seeing things and then they are truly coming, you know, they're coming true or they're a possible, it almost felt like a, um, Doctor Strange thing at one point. He's saying because there's actually he he, he saying, says there's like, a bunch of different possibilities yeah. and I see one path. He's like I see a narrow way through. Mm-hmm. But there's interesting things and this is kind of a theory. I know we're gosh we're already at fifty minutes. Holy crap! Yeah. Um, this is a dense one. We might go. Over, we're gonna go over. Yeah. Uh, we haven't even talked about Austin Butler and I know I Hunter know. wants to ask me about that. Yes. So. Um. Anyway, uh, there's um. There's theories, right? So there's things, there's theories that like, this is just one possibility. And like, I, this is what, what, what gets wild is that they're saying that Dune, the book, and Dune, these movies coexist in a multiple, in like a multiverse. Shut the fuck up. Well, no, I'm sorry. I, so it's not saying, not saying <laughs> like they're going to. There's they're, no Dune multiverse. I'm not saying that, that it's going to converge, but saying like they're purposely oh, deviating. They're purposely deviating. And it's based in the in the text. This is comic book. Hold on a second. This is comic book brain rot. I'm apparently, sorry. apparently, I could be wrong. I haven't read the book. Apparently, there's a there's a, a some sort of scene or whatever in the book where he talks about a vision, where he kills the bear and says hello, grandfather. Okay. Great. But but that doesn't happen in the book. Right. And that happens in the movie. In the book, his sister kills him and Aaliyah. says some line about the Gom Jabbar. Yeah. But then when he kills him, he says, You die like an animal, which that's the test. That's the Gom Jabbar test, right? Is like if you keep your hand in there and you can withstand the pain, you're not an animal. Yeah. You're above that. So yeah. it was. But I think that's just like an homage to the book. I don't yeah. think that's a fucking okay. multiverse. Okay, but bullshit. I just think it's okay. interesting because I don't there's think other is. things. Hold on. Much like. There's that scene. Next, we're going to get Infinity Stones in the desert and shit. Like, come on. Thanos is going to show up? No. But there's like one frame or sequence of um, of Paul fighting, right? Where his like mask opens up or whatever. It's like in a vision. And in this one, it's the same pose, frame, everything, but it's Johnny. Great. So I just think it's interesting. But I'm (laughs) saying... I don't buy this at all. I'm not saying that that there's some multiverse. You also see Chani at the top of the sand dune, mm. and then she gets like blown up by a nuke. What I'm saying that doesn't happen is in the book. Or what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying with 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 the post thing, the the grandfather thing, that was an actual theory, not mine, but I read it. It was interesting. But but the with the Chani thing is that mm-hmm. I don't think we know because he's following his mother in one of them, right? Sure. And, you know, I, I don't think we, I think it's interesting to see that I don't think he actually knows what's happening. It's like versions of it are happening. Does that make sense? Yes. I think that's interesting. I don't think there's a multiverse. But he sees a path through. So he sees yes. which way to now, go. Now, now he does. So we got to see what that is, I guess, in Messiah, which I guess is the Holy War. Which it looks like is going to happen because Denise said that he would make a third movie if this one was successful, and we've already passed like four hundred million. Last I've heard, he is writing Messiah. Yeah, but okay. he has said like I don't like talking about it when I'm writing it. So sure. shut up. Yeah, and in so many words, was like you're gonna have to be patient because sure, which I mean, it's fine. This was what three years. Yeah, actually, m- kind of like four because this was supposed to come out in 2020, and it got postponed. Dune was yeah Dune Dune Part One okay, um, and then even this got postponed because the writer strike. But yeah, um, I just think that's interesting. I love. I don't want to hear any <laughs> any more multiverse theories. That's a stupid way to put it. <clears throat> yes, we can talk about the similarities or like the the differences. Like oh, in the book they did this, but in the movie they did this. But the second you say 
I saw this YouTube video. With <laughs> it actually a, wasn't YouTube video. It was somewhere in some form. I don't know. I saw this this blog post and the uh, picture on Google when you go to click on it is some dude going. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, thumbnail. Yeah, the thumbnail was like. Doom, crazy I just theory. think it's an interesting and way to... some multiverse bullshit. It's like, an come interesting on. way to to like be like, I have creative freedom to do what I want with a messiah. If he starts doing some goofy run and then ends up in like a little <laughs> like power orb and sees like all the other Pauls from all the other franchises, I will... But, you know, the the Reverend Brothers have the knowledge of all the past... Right, right, but not Mothers, the right? past ones from different universes. That's true. That's true. So just get for out the of record, here. I don't think this is a multiverse. Can you leave the room? I don't think it's a okay. multiverse. Okay, that would ruin everything. Yeah. Speaking of Timothy Chalamet, multiverse. Well, actually, that can be for news. I can talk about that. What's he doing? <clears throat> I can go and tell you because it actually will segue into my next thing for you. Okay. He says that he wants to have a musical cinematic universe. A musical? He's playing Bob Dylan. Okay. And he wants Austin Butler to show up as Elvis. <laughs> and then like other actors who have like the guy who played Elton, Elton John, John and then like Bohemian Rhapsody. Well, Freddie's sorry, but Freddie dies. No, but I'm saying if it takes place in the seventies, okay. He could show up. You know? It's I true. thought that was I was like but That'd oh. be before the movie. I was like, Oh my kind god. Of. Well, no, I know it'd be like a prequel for that movie. I think it's a stupid idea. I think it's and a- I was like, Please God, no, don't do that. Speaking of Elvis, Which though, Priscilla would you have? Would you have the Priscilla from Elvis, or would you have the Priscilla from Priscilla? Well, if you have Austin Butler's Elvis, you have to have the Priscilla from Elvis. Okay. Because the Priscilla from, from, from Priscilla is in a multiverse. <laughs> what? What? The the new Priscilla, where Jacob Alardi is, is playing a part of Elvis, this dune. is part of this multiverse. <laughs> Fucking A. Okay. All right. Is there an Earth in this which universe? By, which, by the way, this is part of the Batman universe. <laughs> this is, is there an Earth in this universe? So I actually saw a thing that said that, like, yes, uh, but, like, however many thousands of years prior to, okay. basically, like, Terminator happened, and they had, like, a... This is, re- this is in the Terminator this is universe? Cool. Saying, like, they went to war with, like, AI machines. That's why they don't have okay. computers. They have Mintats and stuff, and... Um, but the, the Harkonnens definitely had computers. They had, like, radar systems and stuff. Yeah, they had something. But it was, like, illegal. They, they said it's illegal to make a machine that's smarter than a human. I don't actually know. This is what okay. I was reading. Um, anyway, speaking of... If you made it smart enough, couldn't it just act dumb in front of, like, oh, the testers? Wow. So it would be, like, I am the Blade smartest runner. machine ever. <laughs> and then, like, someone comes and tests it, and they're like, what's four plus four? And it's, like, blue. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stupid ass machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Elvis, I want to hear your thoughts on Fade and Austin Butler. I thought because his first line, I thought, did he sound like Elvis? <laughs> I thought he did for a second. I didn't want to think that. I thought it, but I was like, this is just me hating on Austin Butler. So okay. I threw it to the side. So it's possible that he did sound like Elvis in the in the first line, but then he gets this like. <laughs> Yeah, crunchy gremlin voice. <laughs> you know what I mean. And um, I kind of wonder if they did that on purpose. Well, that's what I was texting uh, you about earlier like, today. Like, it was like Denis was like, "Listen, you got to do this <laughs> because we don't want that." You know what I mean? No, no. I'm saying I, I wonder if they did both of those things on purpose. I'm like, "Hey, your first line, just be Elvis for a second. Oh, okay. And just freak everybody out and be like, "Oh shit, he can't. He's only gonna be Elvis from now on." But I thought he was great. I thought he was. He was, he was a really good villain. Freaky. He was he was pretty freaky when he Callous. licked knives and just like slit girls' throats and stuff. He kissed his uncle. Well, his uncle Not kissed his uncle. him first. Yeah, but then he was like, "Come back here." He was he was like, "You didn't, <laughs> I didn't give you any tongue. Come back." Which I get. I heard that was actually improvised. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like in that first scene, he just like for fun, just like just kills that girl. Yep. 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 What do you think of the aesthetic of uh, the Harkin the the har- Harkonnen's uh, homeworld. Because it was shot in black and white. It was like the black sun or whatever. Yeah, it gave me like... Um, so it was black and white, but like it gave me... What's the Sith homeworld? Gave me Mustafar? Yeah, it gave me those vibes a little bit. Even though but it was like black like, and white. Like dark forests and shit and like lightning everywhere. But it gave me... Oh, you, oh you, okay. You mean from Rise of Skywalker? Musafar is, I think Musafar is Darth Vader's homeworld. Well, I didn't ask what 
No, I thought Darth Vader's homeworld was Tatooine. Well, yes, but Mustafar is like where his uh, um, Mora band. Mustafar is where Vader's castle is, but no, in in the actual place in Rise of Skywalker where, the, where he fights the people in the forest, that's what is it like Exegol or whatever? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Sith lightning planet. <laughs> Exegol, yeah, Exegol, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, dark, barren, rocky planet. That's a bad movie. Um, well, Exegol existed before that movie. I don't even know what movie you're talking about. Rise what of movie? Skywalker. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I have seen that. <laughs> we saw it together. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I thought Faye was great, and I loved the. I really loved the the weird little fireworks. They're like ink blots. Those were that interesting. Was wild. Those were, those that were was interesting. Super cool. Um. What did you think about, why do you think they didn't drug that one House Atreides guy? You know what's interesting is that I, I actually... You think it was a gift to him, or do you think it was a mistake, and then he was just like, don't no, do anything? No, I think it was a test. I think he was trying to like test him, but apparently in the book, that actually has a subplot with one with the, with the, the, the Atreides Mentat. Okay. He's trying to like secretly like assassinate, oh, Okay. I Fate. think, but they just put it in there as like, it's the uncle this time, the Baron. Um, but I thought that was interesting because wasn't he like hurt and like he'd been like held captive or whatever. And so I didn't, I don't think it was like, I took it as kind of a test, but not really a test. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I did take it as like the Baron being like, let's see if you're actually for real. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, this is no, kind of, fine. kind of unrelated. In the first movie was Glossu Raban. That's, um. Uh, Batista, yeah, Batista. Was he not Baron in the first movie? Like, did they refer to him as not Baron? Oh, I don't know actually. Because Fade is not Baron in this one, and that's the like heir apparent, right? So that's like whoever's going to succeed, mm. you know, Vladimir. Yeah. Um. And it was just interesting because because Raban is older, so you would think, he, but he just fucks it up on Arrakis. Yeah, he had a quite a he had quite a downturn. Yeah. Um I thought I thought he was good in the role, but I like I thought it was interesting how he just sucked at his job. Well, because he was all brute force and he didn't have any like cunning. Like you can't just like brute force rule a planet. You need to like at least have some strategy and he was just like, I'll go and then he gets there and he's like, Shit, this is Yeah. You know what's interesting is that I really um I really loved and we we can come back to to to, to fade and stuff in a second, but I loved the scene, you know, where like Raban, he's like, "I'll go find them," you know, yeah. whatever. Is this is this after they destroyed the Fremen's like home? I can't remember. No, no cause that's because that's, that's fade. 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 Fade comes in. So he goes in and like he's out there in the, in, in the the desert, and I love the mystique, the legend that Muad'Dib has become. Cause yeah, because they, they don't know it's Paul. I loved that. I was like, right. they don't know it's Paul. It's just this this thing called Muad'Dib. Um, and uh, Raban's terrified. Like that fear, I yeah, thought, yeah, was yeah. a really, really good scene. It was a really, really well done and performed by all parties. And I got to tell you, you know, I'm, you know, it can get a little cliche, but those shots of Paul with the hood up and the like silhouette of him, and the only time you see his face when like lightning flashes or whatever, I thought that was really, really cool. Cloak blowing in the wind. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry, Hollis is asleep. He's probably asleep. There, there, there were some scenes where I was like, "This looks like it's like from Assassin's Creed or something like that." Mm-hmm. 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 So Paul becomes a Fidakin. Yes, I don't and know if I pronounced that right. Falls in love with Chani. Can I say something? Mm-hmm. Her name's Chani. Throughout the entire movie, it sounded like Timothy was saying Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. Uh. He, 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 oh, one thing that's becomes interesting. Becomes a Fidakin. In the book, there's no like there's no dichotomy between the Fremen who live like closer to like the Harkonnen settlements and the s- southern, like the south and north. Yeah, like those southern fundamentalists. It's not like a thing in the book. Um, it's interesting that he brought that in. You know. Yeah, I think it's just I, I would take it. I took it as more commentary and just like. 
That felt more like the manipulation, like knowing your audience. Okay. You know, like like his he that was him being a Bene Gesserit? Well well yeah, but but like Lady Jessica was like, We have to get the fundamentalist. Okay. And then we'll like we'll have hold. What she know? says is we need to start with the weak ones. Yeah, that's true. Isn't that what she says when she's yeah, down she there does, and she's like she thinking the, loudly? The vulnerable ones, the weak ones. She's like thinking out loud. She thinks like so Ed Sheeran. Loud. Except her legs do work like they used to before. Congratulations. You know what I mean? Congratulations. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean. <laughs> She's in, in her little little pod riding the worm. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah. She's riding that worm. <laughs> The dust and the. I saw a, a video. It's a video of a guy called Heavy Spoilers, and he was like, "Grab your popcorn buckets and ride that worm." <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, let's talk about the end. Okay. I know there's so much that we can't unpack, but uh, cinematically, visually, this movie is damn near perfect. So we can get that out of the way. Technically, it's perfect. Hans Zimmer, you know, the sound is incredible. Yeah. Um, but the emperor comes to Arrakis in his giant ball. Uh, and at this point, what's happened? So they have the atomics. They have the nukes. Thanks to Gurney. He's back. There's a little guitar thing. And... Uh, Fade has secured the bloodline with mm-hmm. Margot Fenring. And the Emperor is coming down to essentially try and stop this war, play peacemaker, even though it's kind of his fault. With the hopes of that not getting out, right? Like that right. they could secure the the throne. Um and Paul has fully stepped into his Lisa Nagaib role with that scene in, in the circle you know they're all like the, the council's there he mm-hmm. like reads somebody's mind or whatever and he's like I know this place the Fremen name Dune and I was like he said the title they've got nukes now Shit. yeah so uh, the Baron's like sir you know Emperor we're here to you know whatever yeah and then they just fuck shit up they blow up the place they ride it on the worms. Dope scene. But the coffee didn't work, did it? No. Coffee yeah. doesn't work on me. You know oh, this. Yeah. yeah, me neither. Probably because he's drinking it at 1 a.m. at Waffle House. Anyway, um, Paul makes a play for the throne mm-hmm. and breaks Johnny's heart. And yeah. asks for the hand of the emperor's daughter. That's another difference between... Um, the books. The book and the movie. Is that in the book, even though she doesn't really believe in the prophecy, she still supports Paul and Lady Jessica in their like power play throughout mm-hmm. and like stands by their side. And in the book she does not or in the movie she does not. She's like, nah, fam. I'm She's out. Like, I'm out. But then it looks like she the second that he says, like, I'm gonna marry Irland, she looks like she's thinking, damn messed up yeah like she's hurt yeah she's hurt i love the framing you know when they all kind of kneel and they're both left standing opposite each other facing mm-hmm. i was like "Ooh." anyway um it feels like that is more that's not a romantic gesture obviously because he even says like i'll always love you as long as i live yeah, yeah um but she's like maybe he's full of shit because you know he's doing all this stuff but what do you think of the fight with fade it's a good fight. It's a good fight. I think if he is the Messiah and if he has like all these abilities and he can see the future and stuff, it's kind of odd that he wouldn't have just like quickly cut his throat, like Fade's throat and ended it. Cause like, it's like no one's defeated him, you know, and he, blah, 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 blah. It feels like once he's drink the God juice, he's no longer the flawed 
human hero anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he can see the future. Once he's like resurrected. If right, you will. right. He's he's all this stuff is going on. He can see everything, and he's he's like um, at the end of Lucy. <laughs> You know? Oh my god, that movie is insane. <laughs> um but yes. And he's it, he's unlocked all of his brain. <laughs> I yeah, he's unlocked all of his brain. So I do the the fight was really good, but to me it seems like he should have just been like I know which way you're going to swipe and I'm just going to go floop, floop, just like that. <laughs> but that's or maybe the thing, he knew like, that the only path forward was to let Fade stab him and think that he had won and then that would allow him to get the dagger in and you know Maybe that was the only strategy that because would work. Because it's a narrow path. Because you know? he's got the... But do you think it's literally like... That's what I was trying to say with what I was saying earlier before I made you so mad about the multiverse comment. But I'm saying like, do you think... <laughs> I don't think it's... I'm not... It's not my theory is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like, what do you think he's seeing? Do you think it's like, I know the future? Or is it like... Well, he does know the future. He knows all the f- possible futures. That's different than a multiverse. No, I know, but do you do you see that as like as as literal? Like, do you or is it like he just has a vision that's? Oh, hold on a second. I answer my own question because after he wakes up from his death, he does actually say like it's all clear now. Because beforehand, yeah. he's like it's all it's not clear. He's it's seen just, the past. He's seen the future, just, and he knows the path forward. Okay, you have a point. But that's interesting because the Reverend Mother, like not not. Jessica, but the other Reverend Mother. The Reverend Mother. Correct. Like Queen Bitch. Queen Bitch. Um, she can also allegedly see the future and see a path, but yeah, obviously they don't, working. they don't connect, yeah. right? So it's like he is the variable that she didn't take into account. So she can see a bunch of possible futures, but she wasn't looking at the ones in which this happened with him. Does that make mm, sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know. Just straight up in there. <laughs> Into the one path. The one path. Um, I'm excited for for, for Doom Messiah. I am too. I have a quick question for you. Please. At the end of Dune, just, just Dune. Just Dune. Um, did We got a fight between Gurney and Raban, right? Yeah. And, and it Gurney, was like a really good fight. I think Gurney lost. Gurney lost. And in this one... He just makes quick work of him. Really quick work. Yeah, I loved it. That was great. Do you think that, like, why was Raban so... Was he just, like, scared shitless and couldn't fight, or...? I don't know. It's... I mean, I liked it because it was like, hell yeah. But then I was like, in context, it's like, did he just forget how to fight? Did he, like, forget what he was doing? Because he sucks at everything now. Yeah. I do get that. Because, like, even when he's retreating... Mm Mm-hmm. Retreating. (laughs) Up into the ship. (laughs) Yes. Retreating, he's like, he's full on running away. Yeah, like in that one, which I I, I thought they're in the throne room. He runs out. Yeah, but like the the girl, I thought it was Johnny actually, who like jumps on him, like follows him. I don't think it is because it's that girl didn't live. Yeah, it's not. But like, he's not really fighting. He's just like scrambling. Yeah, and I was like, this dude doesn't know what he's doing anymore. So I get that. That's a quite a drastic drop off from being like this feared warrior being like mm-hmm. you don't know what you're doing dude um but i did appreciate it. like he was like this is for my friends and my family and you did i have another question for you okay now that um the the old emperor has like knelt and kissed his ring and paul has agreed to like let him live is he like a political prisoner at this point, or is he like an advisor to the throne? Is he just like a lame duck? I don't know. Like, he you know what I mean? Because obviously the great houses are gonna try to kill Paul and reinstill the emperor, or maybe one of them will become the emperor or something, yeah. right? But like Paul said, I'll let you live. But obviously he's not just gonna like let him go with the great houses. I don't know because since his daughter will be the empress or whatever, yeah. I guess I don't know. Yeah, she will be. Yeah. He's not nobody. Right. You know, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Is he going to be back? The Emperor? I would think so. Walken? I would think so. How old is he now? Very. You say February? I said very. Oh. I was about to say that's a month. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken is 80. 80, okay. He's got a good... 20 years left. 
I hope so. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah. Then, you know, it ends with him saying, lead them to paradise. And still cars. Hype. Do you know he did a screen test for, or he, he auditioned for Han Solo? Like in the original? I think I've, I've seen that clip. Isn't it a joke? Um, no, there's somebody who's doing an impression of him as Han Solo, isn't it? Okay, maybe. But he actually auditioned, auditioned for Han Solo. And his partner in the audition, uh, who mm-hmm. was playing uh, Princess Leia, was Jodie Foster. What a world that could have been. What a world that could have been. Wild. I love you. I know. <laughs> Greedo. Like, <laughs> Come on, Greedo. Just use the force. I can't do it. I, sometimes I'm I like, can't do a Christopher Walken. I'm like I'm spot on. And sometimes I'm just like really bad at it. I've never been spot on. Yeah. I just sound like some sort of like high pitched voice Italian, like Joe Pesci or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even sound like Joe Pesci. Uh, well, cool. <sighs> Anything else? Mm-mm-mm, no, I have a question to ask you then, because we didn't even we barely scratched the surface in an hour and fifteen minutes. Oh Lord, okay. What? When you say Oh Lord, you're gonna ask me the question. I have to answer it. Yeah, it's, it's a heavy, important. heavy question. It is a heavy question. Is that's wrong? But I'm gonna start over. Here's the question. You ready for the question? Zach, I have a question for you. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm ready. Yes. Uh, my question for you is, but is Dune Part 2 good? It's more than good. Wow. It is fantastic. This is going to be, It's there's no question, this is going to be a best, a best, picture, <laughs> a best picture nominee in the Oscars. It is going to be a Golden Good finalist. There's no question in my mind, because it's... It may not be our genre, but it is incredible. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. The first one was a, was a Best Picture nom, wasn't it? It was. And I think this was... Can we talk about something real quick? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The first one was very like pensive and like there was a lot of room to think. You know, we talked about like the the long shots of the the... You know, spies. The, well, the the Atreides homeworld and just yeah, like yeah. how beautiful it was, and then the desert and this and that. And there was a lot of times you just like think, and this one was just like filled with action and like things happening all the time. There really wasn't that that like pensive quality to yeah. it. Yeah, this was the reaction to the action of the first movie in the sense of like the things that took place. This was first one was world building to me, which I don't think is a bad thing. Yeah, because it still stood on its own. Mm-hmm. It was still really good. This one. It's like the plot was like moving forward in a, in a linear way. Yeah. Um, I think this movie was far and above better than the first one. Do you agree? I would have to agree with with, with all that, actually. I would say that uh, Dune Part 2 is exceptional. It uh, will be a golden good. This is the first golden good of the year, actually. That we've identified. Yeah. Well, the ones that I think we had, yeah, well, we'll, we'll figure it out, because ones that we just did. We're not going to do, like, best pick... So the best picture movies that are in between, like we didn't do them last year. Yeah, they'll never be. It's never possible for them to get a golden good. I don't know because it feels feels I don't like know. they should be. Okay, well so then like Past Lives is going to be a golden good yeah, nominee, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Poor Things was already in last year. It Poor already won. Like so, year. but yeah, this is the first one that we've recognized, and at least the first film of twenty twenty four that has gotten a golden good nominee. Um, nomination. Uh, yeah, it's like, this is exceptional. And I think that Dune Part 2 is better than Dune Part 1. I do. I well, there you have it. There you have it. It's time for um, Every Movie Sucks. Every, Every movie, movie Sucks. Yes, it sucks. Somebody hates the movie you love. All right, Here I got go. one. Okay, you can go first. Uh, Austin Butler turns into his true form, an uncircumcised dick. <laughs> That's what I was reading earlier. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, this says what I don't know what this means. This could be a really derogatory term. I don't mean it to be because I don't know what it means. Should you just not read it if you think it might be a really derogatory term? 
<laughs> I'm going to ask you, and then if it is, well, I'll cut it out. It says, what kind of smooth brain ape? I don't know what that means. Is, is it bad you know, to have well, a smooth brain? It means brain? like an idiot. An well, no, un, I know what I'm saying, but like... An unevolved idiot. You're saying you have a smooth brain. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like okay. the more grooves you have in your brain, the smarter you are, or like the okay. more developed your brain is. So well, a smooth, just, a smooth brain it. ape would be like an idiot. Somebody who's dumb. Okay, it says, what kind of smooth brain ape do you have to be to give this a 4.6? Higher than, than, than Dark Knight? Higher than Schindler's List? Has the world collectively lost its motherfucking mind? Dog shit, start to finish. Um, this one says Florence Pugh is too hot to be hooking up with Timothy Chalamet. Half Star says, I've never been more embarrassed by a film. Why? Here's one that says, uh, when has a white boy been messiah of anything? (laughs) It gets a half star because it finally fucking ended. (laughs) Jeez. I would rather be forced to eat a plate of cashews than to rewatch <laughs> this. I guess that person doesn't like cashews. Maybe they're allergic. This person quoted Star Wars. It says, I hate sand. It's coarse, rough, yeah. and it gets everywhere. I saw something on Twitter that said the only difference between Paul Atreides and Anakin Skywalker is that Anakin hates sand and Paul loves sand. It's the only difference between only them. difference. So in Watchable, I forced, my eyes forced themselves shut and my brain had to go into rim. You just read two in a row. I'm sorry. And I'm, that's against the law. I'm sorry. You get to read two in a row real fast. I don't know what just happened. One out of ten, there's no Wario. There's no Wario? <laughs> yeah. That's what it says. All right, you can close this. I'll do one more. Um, ba 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 it looks like it might be just a lyric from a song. Does this sound like it's a lyric to a song? I show these hoes what a rack is. <laughs> now they're trying to ride this worm. Doesn't that sound like like a rap lyric or something? Yeah. Like a rack is? A rack, like a stack of cash? Do you yeah, get it? I get it. A rack is? Well done. A rack is? Well done. There you have it, folks. That's Dune Part 2. Shall we do news, shindigs? AI-generated Balenciaga advert. I did three in a <laughs> oh row. God. Screw you. <laughs> okay. Here we go. News, news, news of the week. Yeah, it's news of the week. Yeah, it is. Um, let me pull up my thing real fast. Uh, the biggest thing that we'll go over real quick in a minute is we're going to do the Oscars were last night, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they are a thing that happened. Here's news, okay? Nick Cage is rumored to return... As Ghost Rider for Deadpool 3. Multiverse. <laughs> Is that like a trigger word for you now? Just don't bring it into... It's fine if we're talking about mov- m- comic book movies. For the record, I don't think Dune is a multiverse. But if we're talking about Dune and you're like, oh, I saw this article written by some white S- boy smooth, like us. Smooth brain, <laughs> smooth brain ape. <laughs> It was talking about how Dune's a multiverse. I don't think it is a multiverse. Um, well, you brought it to the table. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I don't agree with it. Uh, Emily Brunt is Emily Brunt. Emily Brunt. Em- Emily Blunt is reportedly in talks to star alongside The Rock in Benny Safdie's A24 film. Uh, first look at Bill Skarsgård as Eric Driven in The Crow. People are not happy about this, but The, the Crow is being remade with uh, mm-hmm. Bill Skarsgård. Mm-hmm. Um, Dakota Johnson says audiences are smart and executives think they're think they're dumb in referring to Madam Web, which we're doing in a couple of weeks. I'm very excited. Uh, a new trailer for David Dasmakian's Late Night with the Devil, which looks fascinating. Are we uh, gonna do Argyle? I don't know. <laughs> I heard it was terrible. I heard it was terrible too. Uh, uh, the Community film is set to begin filming this month. They're doing it around Donald Glover's schedule. Anne Hathaway and Nicholas Galatine Gallad- are uh, starring in The Idea of You. They got a trailer. Timothy Chalamet wants a biopic cinematic universe with Austin Butler's Elvis, yeah. which I think is a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a new trailer for Fallout. Um, and then a first glimpse of the leader, 
who was originally an incredibly ho- in, in Incredible Hulk, and he is returning in Captain America 4. And then let's run down some Oscar winners real quick. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Best sound, Zone of Interest. Best score, Oppenheimer. Best mm-hmm. song, Barbie. Best actor, Killian Murphy. Best director, Christopher Nolan. Best actress, kind of a, the the surprise one of the night, Emma Stone. One for Poor Things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, best cinematography, Oppenheimer. Uh, best editing, Oppenheimer. Best visual effects, first time in the history of the franchise, Godzilla minus one. First ever Oscar nomination and first win. Uh, best international feature film was The Zone of Interest. Costume design, Poor Things. Production design, Poor Things. Makeup and hairstyle, Poor Things. That the screenplay, American Fiction. Original screenplay was Anatomy of Fall. Best animated feature, Boy and the Heron. There we go. Uh, supporting actress, Divine Joy Randolph. The Holdovers. Thought that was awesome. And then best supporting actor, Robert Downey Jr. That's right, baby. And then, of course, best picture was Oppenheimer. Did you see... You watched... I watched like 80% of the Oscars. I got home after it started. Did you see how uh, Al Pacino announced <laughs> the yes. best picture? <laughs> I don't know what was happening. And people were like confused if he actually read the answer. Or yeah, not. I thought he was or like n- Not the answer, but the... but the. And then you can hear him I at one point. I see Oppenheimer. I see Oppenheimer here. And then like no one claps. And then the music starts and people start yeah. like lightly like, clapping. Oh, wow. And you can hear him off screen saying, what happened? And then it's just like, they like cut off his mic or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That what was happened. odd. I really loved seeing um, my childhood favorite guitar player Slash show up near Nine Just Ken. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was him and mm-hmm. Mark Ronson and Wolfgang Van Halen. That was amazing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, I mean, that's the winners. Zach, there you have do it. Do you have a Braves minute for us? I do. I'm going to pour some I, whiskey. I have a quick that. news thing. Um, oh, yeah, I, don't know news. If, I don't know if you've mentioned this. Did you know they're making a, a sequel to Spinal Tap? No, I didn't. Yeah. Well, okay. I've actually only seen like half of Spinal Tap. You haven't seen Spinal you're a, a musician, and you haven't seen like the mockumentary of a rock star. I know the part where he's like, "But these go to 11. That's such a small part. And of he's like, "Why not just make ten louder?" And he's like, "Yeah, but but these go to 11. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're not skipping over Braves minute, so no, no, no. I'm just getting just getting ready. Okay. Okay. Did you? It's want time to, for the. Did Braves. you want to skip it? Can Can I read you? I'm not going to read you anything. Spencer Strider has been pitching very well. Yeah. He's pitched a bunch of innings, and he has, hasn't given up any runs. Amazing. He added a curveball to his repertoire. Hell yeah, he needed it. And so now he's not just a flamethrower. He's a flamethrower with some uh, finesse. Some junk. That's what, that's, what, that's what they call it. Watch out for the junk. I thought they called it stuff. Either one. Junk sounds bad. He's got good stuff. Stuff sounds Watch good. Watch the junk. Is junk like specific to a curveball? Watch the junk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my Braves minute. It's very brave of you. We should actually time it and just like cut me off when, when I get to a minute. <laughs> do you want to try that now? Or you want to do it next episode? No, next episode. It's already right, been cool. it's already been over a minute. So now it's time for whiskey shots. Whiskey shots. Tell us about whiskey shots. Whiskey shots is in honor of my hour. I say hour. Might as well just say hour because I guess they're my cats, but they're our cats. We had two cats. Jack and Whiskey, who uh, each passed over the past couple of years. Um, Whiskey started the podcast with us, and she used to walk around during our recordings. And so we do a shot of whiskey in honor of her, and we take our time, take this chance to tell people uh, that you matter, and to tell somebody that you love, that you love them, to somebody that you hate, that you love them, because it, life's too short to hate. And that'll really throw them off balance. That's right. Be the change you want to see in the world. You know, I. You I, know what? Just so you know, <laughs> it's a you're allowed to take up space. That's true. Take up space. I'm done. You can go. You are allowed to take up space. I used to do this. Um, I took a meditation class in my master's program. Meditating is hard. Meditating is very fruitful, and it's. It's not hard. Well, I'm saying like I so I'll do it. Sometimes I have to do is breathe. I'll do it sometimes like in the morning. Yeah. 
for like three to five minutes. Okay. I did five minutes, and I was like, I got so restless. So it's good for me. Yeah. But I'm like... It's about acceptance. It's about not moving and just accepting the restlessness. You know what's funny is that I remember actually I did... I, I was doing like a like a session. It's, a, it's three minutes. So it wasn't that, that, that long, but I remember thinking like, it'll come. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it'll it'll come. It's like, about don't don't try and rush it. Noting and acknowledging the restlessness, and then gently accepting it, and then gently bringing your attention back to the breath or whatever you're focusing on. I don't yeah. know if you're doing like breath work. Yeah, that's what most people do, right? Anyways, um, I was taking this meditation class, and we started out with like basic stuff, like the baby baby meditation that you're trying to do and you're struggling with. I'm kidding. No, it's um, I'm I'm not. It's it, I'm I never sit still, so it's tough for me. Um, but we graduated into a bunch of different meditations and one of them was like a loving kindness meditation where you like imagine yourself and you're sitting and you're focusing on your breath just like you do in like basic, you know, meditation. But when you breathe in, you, you imagine someone sitting in front of you who's suffering. So like it can be someone you love who has cancer or something and you breathe in, and you, like, breathe in black smoke from their body, and when you breathe out, you breathe out white smoke that's, like, healing. And you start out with someone that you love, and then uh, the next day, we did, like, a stranger. So you just imagine, like, you know, someone that you saw on the way to class or something, Mm -hmm. like someone that you have no affiliation to whatsoever and do it for them. And the third day, we they they were like, pick your worst enemy. And me. breathe in, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like breathe in black smoke and breathe out. You know what? <laughs> Here's something funny. I might get some flack for this from from people. Uh, it was right. It was 2016, and I think I picked Trump. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it was like so prevalent at that yeah. time. You know what I mean? I don't know. But God bless you for trying, though. Hmm? I said, God bless you for trying. I tried. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so yeah, do that. Tell someone you hate, you love them. It's kind of like doing the breathing in the smoke thing. Cheers. Don't smoke; it's bad for your lungs. It is bad for your lungs. <laughs> Why do we do this for whiskey? Oh, you got the shivers. My nipples got hard. <laughs> I got to chill. <laughs> can you see them? I can see the outline of your of the of that's, the that's of the point. right one. No, the right one. I can see the where your shirt goes <laughs> like that. Where can they find us, Hunter? Uh, you can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at But Is It Good Podcast. You can find us on X at B I I G B I I G Podcast. Email us at B-I-I-G podcast at gmail.com and but is a good podcast at gmail.com. You can find me at Hunter Callahan Music Everywhere. You can find Zach on Instagram with Zach with an H to the number T H A Future dot three one. And next week we have a very special episode. We have a, a guest, independent filmmaker, uh Wilfred LaSalle is gonna be in the podcast talking about Rocky Four, a film that uh has influenced him and in his filmmaking. Uh, we'll be talking about that on Instagram and stuff, on socials, and so it's very exciting. It's a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with that one. So, yeah. Finger guns. And then we're doing Madam Web to end the month because we have to. Then we're going to do Argyle to start out next month. We have to do the Godzilla Kong. <laughs> we don't have to, but we've done, we've, we've done the rest of them. True. Yeah. Every week... It used to be that every time I drank whiskey, it got easier, but every week it gets a little harder. Yeah, this is tough. I might just do like a little, just fill the bottom with it. Or we can just start doing apple apple juice. Apple juice. Anyway. Bye. But is it good podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah.